So, uh, what now? In 1982, Commodore released the 1541 floppy disk drive to pair with the new C64 home computer. The original model shown here was built with an ALPS drive mechanism. These early units can be distinguished by the pull-down tab used to close the drive door. A number of problems plague these drives, including overheating, as well as frequent misalignment due to manufacturing defects and the characteristic head knocking, which was implemented to work around the lack of a track zero sensor. To remedy this, Commodore switched suppliers in 1984 and revised the 1541 to use drives made by Mitsumi's Neutronics subsidiary. This resolved the alignment issues, but introduced a new problem. The heads of these new... Tronics drives were improperly sealed, allowing moisture to penetrate to the delicate coil inside and resulting in a short that renders the drive inoperable. These failure-prone models can be distinguished by their more conventional flip lever. The fault can take decades to manifest, but it's relentless and it is pervasive. One user on the Lemon64 forum lamented that of the nine 1541 drives he owned, eight of them failed simply while sitting unused in climate-controlled storage. And it's not just bread bin brown models that are affected either. Certain 1541C and 1541Ts also contain Neutronics mechanisms and are also susceptible to read-write head failure. Let's take a look at a few examples. Here are a couple 1541-2 drives. This one is in good working condition. This drive is the one we just experienced the read error with and suspect it may have suffered a head failure. I've already removed all the screws, so let's start by testing the working unit. Here's the read write heads carriage assembly. This is a single sided drive, so there's only one head located at the bottom, which makes it a little hard to see. If we follow the cable from the head to the circuit board and disconnect it, we can see that the pin header is keyed with pin 2 being absent. To test the head, all we'll need is a multimeter set to resistance mode. To perform the test, we'll measure the resistance between all four conductors. This will give us six possible permutations. What we're looking for is measurable resistance below 100 ohms. If we see no resistance at all, we've got a dead short and the head is toast. Okay, pins one and three look good. One in four check out. One in five. Three in five. Four and five are good. And not shown are three and four, which are also fine. The read write head of this drive is within spec. Okay, now let's swap the good drive for the one we had a problem with earlier. As we can see from the label, this 1541-2 has a Neutronics drive mechanism. Oddly, it has much longer wires than its sibling. Alright, let's perform the same test as before, starting with pins 1 and 3. Gotta bear down hard to make sure I'm making good contact with the probes here. Nothing. How about 1 and 4? Nope. 1 and 5? Nada. 3 and 5? That looks better. Four and five? That looks good too. But pin one is short. We have a dead read-write head. This drive cannot be repaired and is now only useful as spare parts. Both of these 1541-2 drives have Neutronics mechanisms and one is already dead. I guess it's only a matter of time until my good drive here fails too. Blech. Here's how you can identify a 1541-2 with a belt-driven and failure-prone Neutronics drive. It looks nearly identical, but take note that the lever sits flush with the front housing here. In contrast, the 1541-2 with the slightly recessed lever uses a direct drive chinon mechanism instead. Now you know what to look out for when you see what looks like a good deal on eBay. Earlier, I mentioned that repairing a failed head is not possible, 
I want to talk a little more about that now. Here's a useful blog post on RetroHacks.net discussing various 1541 repairs that will help to illustrate this point. A link is in the description below. A floppy drive's read-write head is comprised of copper coils wound around a ferrite core, a basic electromagnet. Not only is this device incredibly small, but it's also potted in epoxy, making removal difficult. Similar to a CRT's deflection yoke, repair is within the realm of possibility, but beyond the skill of the average enthusiast. As a result, replacing the head or the entire drive mechanism with a known good part is really the only option. Replacing just the drive head is no walk in the park either, since spare parts are not readily available. One Lemon64 forum user discussed using a donor part from a Chinon PC drive to retrofit his 1541 as seen here. He goes on to link to a photo gallery of the process, wherein he removes the failed head and glues in the donor part. Getting the head properly aligned after the swap was necessary, but the drive was fully functional after the procedure. This route seems a bit more approachable, assuming you are able to source a compatible donor and have the tools necessary to perform an alignment. Now that you're armed with this information, you can go shopping with confidence because, let me tell you, there are a lot of these drives out there. Take this one for example. The ad says it powers on but gets a file not found error message, but it worked six months ago. It goes on to say it'll probably work fine after an alignment and cleaning. Are you willing to take that bet? Because I think we know better now. I don't need to tell you this, but if it says untested for parts, there's a high probability the seller knows it's bad. Sure, there are parts on there that are useful, the PCB and chips on it for instance, but the Neutronics drive itself? Not so much. Powers on is another code word for untested. Or worse, I know it doesn't work. Steer clear. Even better are these untested Neutronics drives for literally 10 times the price. Is anyone actually buying these things? Well, here's your answer. Yes, someone just paid $150 shipped for this one that powers on and spins. I'm sorry whoever you are out there, I failed you by not making this video sooner. And here's one more for good measure. Untested, as is, and it's a Neutronics. Bought by someone for 140 bucks. So there you have it, the Commodore 1541 and which ones you should avoid. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and check out our Patreon or channel memberships if you'd like to help support future Retrobits videos. I hope you learned something new, thank you so much for watching, and see you next time.